So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to apply and blend your makeup flawlessly. So this video is very beginner friendly, it's very step by step and very detailed, so let's get into it. So first I like to start off with my skincare, then get into moisturizer. If you're not moisturizing your skin, then your makeup will be so hard to blend on your skin because the surface of your skin is probably going to be dry. Even though it doesn't feel dry, it probably is dry. So your makeup might be patchy, it might just not blend perfectly. So you always wanna make sure to moisturize your skin. I like using an SPF moisturizer because it protects my skin from the sun. And I usually find that moisturizing SPFs are very hydrating on the skin. So the one that I like to use is this Black Girl Sunscreen. This is the moisturizing body lotion, so you can use it for your face and your body. I love using this for my face before makeup. It just gets the job done. So this SPF is really good for people with dry skin. And if you have oily skin, then I would say use a hydrating moisturizer. One that is oil-free because your skin already has oil. But you really want to make sure that you're still using a moisturizer regardless if your skin is oily, dry, or combination. Always want to make sure to moisturize the next is primer so primer is important because it contains a lot of properties that are going to allow your makeup to stick on your skin essentially it allows your makeup to blend flawlessly especially foundation so you definitely want to use a primer that's great for your skin type I'm gonna go in with Milani supercharged dewy primer this is a moisturizing primer I have dry skin so I always use moisturizing primers but if you have oily skin you can go in with an oil-free moisturizer such as the milk hydro grip primer this is a great primer for all skin types or you can go in with the NYX Hydro Touch primer I know this one is oil free and it's very hydrating so it's also really good if you have oily skin or combination skin so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this Milani primer directly on my skin using a primer as a moisturizer is not enough moisture for your skin I would highly recommend going in with the moisturizer and a primer at the same time so I'm gonna go ahead and blend this on my skin and this primer blends really nicely with the SPF on top of it it does not move the SPF because they have very similar properties. Now, the main reason why your makeup might be really hard to blend is because your skin is dehydrated. So you always wanna make sure that your skin is super hydrated before you apply any makeup. And that is why I like going in with setting spray before foundation. I'm gonna use the Ilia Beauty Filter Setting Mist. And you wanna just use a mist that is more so hydrating. You don't wanna use one that contains oils. And this will just allow the makeup to really blend on your skin perfectly because your skin is just super hydrated so once I spray that on my skin I like to use a beauty sponge and just press that onto my skin doing this will allow the sponge to absorb that excess product because you don't want too much of the setting spray on your skin it also helps your skin absorb that hydration so after doing all this your skin is hydrated and ready to move on to the makeup so I'm gonna go in with foundation and I'm gonna use the born to glow radiant foundation now with foundation you definitely want to find a foundation that is perfect for your skin type I'm using this radiant foundation because it's great for dry skin but if you have oily skin then you definitely want to use a foundation that doesn't add any oils onto your skin such as like a soft matte natural finish foundation or a hydrating oil free foundation those will blend perfectly on your skin one that I would recommend for oily skin is a Bobbi Brown skin longwear foundation so this is an oil free shine control foundation it has an SPF of 15 which is great and and on top of that, it's also a full coverage foundation. So this is great for oily skin because it won't add any oils onto your skin. So with foundation, I don't like applying it directly on my face. I like placing it on an applicator, so I'm using this flat brush. And one thing about your foundation, you want to swipe it on your skin like this downwards this will prevent the foundation from clogging your pores and by doing this you're giving it a very nice even distribution all over your skin so that it can blend so I like to place some on my forehead as well and I'm not touching the middle of my face because that will prevent the makeup from separating around my nose area so next I'm gonna blend the foundation and I'm gonna use a beauty blender and I like to just pat that onto my skin and as you can see prepping the skin just makes the foundation so much easier to blend on your skin 
even if you have dry skin. So then I like to use whatever's left, so the excess product, and just quickly go over my nose area. This will prevent me from directly applying the foundation onto my nose area. So the reason why I like using a sponge instead of a brush is because I feel like a sponge gives an even distribution of the product all over my skin compared to a brush where it just presses the foundation onto my skin. But it's totally optional. If a brush works better for you, then stick to using a brush. But for me, a sponge works better. And I also like using a sponge because it helps absorb excess products so the makeup is not just sitting on my skin and it's not blended and then next is concealer so for concealer I'm gonna use the Juvia's Place concealer this is in the shade 11 and so for concealer I like focusing it only on a few places of my skin which is right in the inner corner of my eye because that's where I have darkness and then I leave a space right in between there and then I apply it on the outer corner of my eye this will give me room to really blend that concealer if you put too much concealer under your eyes it's gonna look unblended and then I also like to place a little bit down the bridge of my nose on my forehead and on my chin area because those are the areas where light reflects on my face as well so then I like to take a damp beauty sponge and I like to use one that is clean so you don't want to use one that is dirty because it's going to leave your makeup unblended it's gonna put the product that is on the sponge on your fresh makeup which you don't want so you always want to use a clean sponge and then using that I like to just blend out the concealer and as you can see I'm moving the product all the way towards the outer corner of my eye and it's giving an even distribution of the concealer Concealer, starting from the inner corner all the way to the outer corner of my eye and I like to bring the concealer all the way out towards my temples and then once I do that I don't leave it like this you want to go in with the round side of the sponge and blend out this harsh line right there this will give your makeup more of a blended look rather than you being able to see that concealer being dragged all the way out without blending it out this will give you more of that natural look so you just want to do the same thing for this side and blend it drag it all the way out and you want to use the back side and blend out those harsh lines and as you can see you don't see any harsh lines on my temples they're completely blended then you want to blend your chin area so as you can see there is a harsh line right there I just go in and I get rid of the harsh line so blending out the harsh lines will make sure that your concealer is completely blended without any streaks. And it's just gonna give your makeup look more of a flawless finish. All right, so next is contour. Only if you're using a cream contour. If you're using a powder contour, then you wanna apply it after you set the concealer and foundation with powder. But because I'm going in with a cream contour, I'm gonna apply it before applying setting powder. This is going to allow me to blend out all the harsh lines from the cream products before I set it with powder because once you set your makeup with powder it is a done deal okay your makeup will stay exactly how it looked like before you apply the setting powder so for cream contour I'm gonna use the elf cream contour kit I love this kit because it has so many different shades so you can mix them around if you're looking for a soft contour you can mix the shades around but I'm gonna go in with this shade right here and one thing I like to do with contour is I like to take the applicator that I'm using, which is a rounded brush, and directly apply it onto the brush first. Then I like to apply the contour. And for contour, I like just pressing it on my cheekbones and brushing it upwards to blend it out and as you can see it gives me more of a softer look when I do it that way so it's not too harsh and it doesn't look unblended contour is definitely something you want to build up you don't want to apply too much contour at once because once you place it on there you can't take it away unless you wipe it down so you want to build it up and then I like to place a little bit on my jawline area. This is going to help structure my face. And you also wanna place a little bit on your forehead area. These are the areas of the face where you have shadows. So you wanna add the contour there to give your face some structure. But you don't wanna just stop there. You wanna go back in with the sponge that you use for the concealer to blend out any harsh lines that you have from the contour. So you wanna just go back in and blend all these harsh lines next to where the contour is. This is going to help bring a very good gradient from dark to light without any harsh lines on your skin so this will be the time to apply all your cream products so I'm gonna go in with a cream blush you always want to apply all your cream products first before using setting powder because cream is really hard to blend on top of powder so for cream blush I'm gonna go in with the elf putty blush but with blush I like to use an applicator very similar to how I did the contour just use a cream blush and directly apply 
apply it onto the brush making sure to evenly distribute that blush onto the brush then I like to take that and in circular motion just place that right on the highest points of my cheekbones but you don't want to just leave the blush like this you want to go in with the clean side of a sponge and blend that out so this is going to absorb that excess product it's also going to give a really nice even distribution of that blush and you can add more blush as you go just to build up the pigment. If you like a lot of blush, then you can just build up the pigment instead of going in with too much at once and then it being really hard to blend on your skin. All right, so next you wanna set the concealer. I've applied all my cream products and I've blended everything out so I don't see any harsh lines. But if you apply blush and you see harsh lines between the concealer and the blush, then you definitely wanna go in with the same sponge that you use for the concealer and just blend those harsh lines out. Do not be afraid to blend out any harsh lines because that will give you more of a flawless finish so I'm gonna go ahead and set the concealer and I'm gonna use the NYX can stop won't stop mattifying powder and this is in the shade tan and one thing I like to do before applying setting powder is taking a clean sponge and blending out the creasing under my eyes from the concealer because the concealer has been sitting on my skin for a few minutes so it starts forming creases so you want to blend that out first and then immediately take out the powder and press that right underneath your eyes to set the concealer. And this is going to give you more of a flawless under eye without any creases. Then one thing I like to do is use that powder and bring it down all the way towards my nose area. And then I like to lightly go over where the blush and the concealer meet right here to set that area. This is going to give more of that airbrushed look then you wanna do the same thing for this eye. Then you wanna just go in and set all the areas that you applied concealer. And as you can see, doing it like this gives me more of a flawless look. You don't see any harsh lines on your skin. Everything just looks like it's placed and blended on your skin. All right, so now that you've set the concealer, you want to set your foundation. I like using a pressed powder, so it can be a mattifying powder or it can be a powder foundation. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Powder Foundation. I like to focus this on all the other areas where I apply foundation, so like around my mouth area, this is going to set that liquid foundation. And I'm also gonna place a little bit around my eyebrow area. So once you've applied your eye makeup and your lip makeup, you don't wanna just end it there. I like to use the same setting powder that I use to start off my makeup look, which is a hydrating setting spray. And I like to spray my whole face. This is going to help really melt that makeup with your skin so that it looks natural. It doesn't look like there's just powder sitting on top of your skin. It's gonna make it look skin-like. Now this is the most important step in making sure that everything on your skin looks blended and that it looks like your natural skin. So I like going in with black powder and I'm gonna use this RMS Beauty Unpowdered. So this is a setting powder, but it works perfectly as an oil absorbing setting powder. It has mainly cornstarch and cornstarch really helps to absorb excess oils from the skin so I like using a sponge so the same sponge that I use to set my skin and dip a little bit of that powder and I focus it on all the areas that are oily on my face so around my nose area and I also focus it right around this area because that is where I have pores and this is going to help the makeup last on your nose area all day long also like to use a little bit of that powder and just press that right around my forehead area because the forehead also also tends to be really shiny and I also like to focus this around my mouth area this is going to help prevent the laugh lines from forming throughout the day and once you do that your makeup is going to be well blended and look super skin like but remember it's not only face makeup that needs to be blended you also want to learn how to blend eyeshadow that's why you really have to watch this video because in this video I show you exactly how to apply and blend your eyeshadow for a flawless eye makeup look KLJ, welcome to a channel where it's popping